All right, hi there, welcome back. This is lesson uh, five for unit one. And this is all about uh, patterns and relationships in tables. Uh, basically what this is all about is uh, being able to create, um, use patterns to create data tables and then use tables to figure out what the patterns are. Don't forget to write your name on the side and the date. Okay, so an input output machine um, basically just represents a relation. Uh, and any input numbers, you can choose any input number and out of that comes uh, a certain output. Um, any input number, we'll just use uh, N to represent that. So imagine an input output machine that relates N to 2N plus 3. To create what we call a table of values, and this is a table of values right here, uh, we're going to create a set of input values or input numbers. Now, of course, we get to choose whichever numbers we want, all right? So our input here is going to represent n, and our output is going to represent 2n plus 3. So since we get to choose whatever input values we like, uh, why don't I just choose 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, so to get the output number for each given input number, I just have to multiply it by 2 and then add 3. So I'll do this over here on the side. So for 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if my input is 1, my output is going to be 2 times 1 plus 3. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5. My input number is 2, it's 2 times 2 plus 3. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7. If my input number is 3, 2 times 3 plus 3, 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9. And for the last one, 2 times 4 plus 3, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. And so I can fill out my table of values. Okay, so by using consecutive uh, input numbers, uh, the output numbers formed a pattern. We can see that a pattern sort of emerges here. And um, because we've got uh, a table of values, then we can write that relationship as an algebraic expression. Okay, so um, we can, we've seen how we can go from uh, having a set of uh, input and output expressions to create a table, but we also have to be able to go the other way. So imagine we've got an input-output table like this. We need to go backwards and figure out what are the what's the expression or what's the relation between those two. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is basically we're going to look for patterns. So uh, take a look at your input value there. You see our input values are increasing by one every time. We go up one, two, three, four, five. So our input value is just increasing by one. Take a look at what's happening to our output value. There's an increase of four, another increase of four, another increase of four, and so on. So we can start to see a bit of a pattern emerge. Okay. Notice how when the input increases by one, the output increases by four. So this gives us a little bit of a clue. If our input's increasing by 4 each time, then um, every time n goes up by 1, the output goes up by 4, our expression must contain 4 times n. Which explains why every time n goes up by 1, our final output goes up by 4. But that's not the whole story. It's not just n and 4n for our input and output values. Uh, and the reason we know that is because if this was the final expression, then when I put 1 in, I should get an output of 4. But I don't. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to substitute several values in for n and 4n and see if we can see what's missing. So imagine I've got some values for n, and let's see what 4n is. So if I try 1, 2, 3. Uh, I guess if n is 1, then 4n would be 4. If n is 2, then 4n would be 8. If n is 3, then 4n would be 12. We'll take a look at what I'm actually getting here. My actual output for each of those values. My actual output is 7, 
11 and 15. So look at what's missing here. Look, if, look for the pattern. Each of these is three short of my actual output. Each output value is actually three more than the input. So the final output must be 4n plus 3. Okay, my input is n, my output is 4n plus 3. Okay, let's try these same steps again here with this other output. Okay, remember the first thing we're going to look at is we're trying to find a pattern between our output values. So as each of these increases by 1, what's happening with my output values? Well, this is an increase of 3. So is this. So is this, and so is this. So somewhere in my expression, my expression must contain uh, 3n. Now it might be plus or minus something else here. I don't know what that is. And so the way that I'm going to do that is my second step. The second step was to substitute in some values and see what the difference is. So imagine I've got some values of n and then 3n. So 1, 2, 3. If n is 1, then 3n is 3. If n is 2, then 3n is 6. And if n is 3, then 3n is 9. Compare that to the actual output values. The actual output values I'm getting are 2, 5, and 8. So again, what's the pattern? What's the difference? Notice how in each case I'm off by 1. Uh, my actual output is 1 less than I'm expecting. And so my final uh, relation must be 3n minus 1. Alright, don't forget to do your recap, and then that's it.